Joining us on the show now, one of the most popular and unpopular guests we've ever had. He's 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 a guy who who people love or hate, but I know, I know in this instance, I feel it in my bones that even you, Star Maker Bolin, even you, with all the fucking wretched opinions you have on life, you cannot possibly support Governor Nathan Deal and the state of Georgia's gun law. You can't possibly have any any uh, agreement with what they have done allowing people to carry guns in schools and churches and bars and restaurants and anywhere they want to with impunity you can't possibly agree with this kenny boland you're on the air do something to redeem yourself in front of my audience of the cult of cornet do something you uh you've caught me off guard here you you shock me you shock me when it comes to I wouldn't you, have thought that was possible. Well, first of all, Jimmy, don't you don't you own a gun? What? Don't yes, you own, I, you own yes, a gun. Why do a, you why why do you own a gun? But if now I own a gun that I keep in my home that fires six bullets that in case uh-huh, of a six shooter home invasion that I could defend myself, but well, that's different from carrying you, it out in public. That's uh-huh. different. Airing it out in public around other people, around other people's families, and putting them in danger. Well, you and I definitely are going to see things a little bit differently on this. I, wait a minute. I've never said that people shouldn't own a gun. Mm-hmm. The fire shots that they keep in their home. I knew for a fact you owned them. I'm against assault rifles. I'm against AK-47s. I'm against, uh-huh, I'm against uh-huh. all multiple shot firing weapons that are carried out in public that are used to commit all these acts of mayhem. Yes, I am. Well, I uh, you, you've, you've kind of taken me off guard here a little bit because I've I've known you for ob- obviously most of your life. I've known you've owned guns, and I also knew you in your childhood. You and our old high school buddies. You, you Wait a minute, singular, not plural. Gun. I have one gun that I keep mm-hmm. in my. Well, one that I've seen. Uh, well, well, what what what? Do, do you, you really want to see Jimmy's other gun? Well, no, not <laughs> particularly, but. Um, let me explain to you why you have a bad perception on this. And I think if you reflect back to your uh, grade school days and your high school days, you're going to see my way of thinking on this because I support the man in, in, in what he's saying about carrying the guns and having them in the bars and the taverns what? and the schools. Oh, absolutely. We could put an end to school shootings right now. What do you think would happen, Jimmy, is if in the middle schools and the elementary schools and the high schools, if each little kid had his own little six shooter in his pocket or, or in his backpack or what have you? And let's, say, and let's say one of these jackasses, one of these rednecks comes in. He's got his gun. He's got his rifle. He's got his assault rifles. And, all that. and let's say 32 kids in Mrs. Tinker's class. Class, all had a gun pointing at that little son bitch when he walked through the door, and everybody got to fire six shots at him. How many school shootings do you think there would ever be again? There Are would be fucking. Oh no, there'd be fucking none. And and this is all documented, Jimmy. This is all. This goes back in history. This Where is this back, documented? Documented. It's all. Uh, it's all on television. You know, I watch a lot of me TV. I watch a lot of television. I watch a lot of 60s, 70s, and 80s programs. And this is all documented. Uh, let's let's go let's go to uh, the the rifleman for for crying out loud. How many how many people fucked with the rifleman? Nobody. Nobody fucked with the rifleman. And then, no no no. Don't interrupt me. Let me explain myself here. The rifleman. He walked into bars. He walked in taverns. He'd eaten in little restaurants. He'd go into dress shops with his so called girlfriend. And nobody fucked with the rifleman because he had a big fucking rifle in his hand. And now let's go to little Mark McCain. Mark McCain was always getting the dog shit beat out of him. Somebody was always fucking with him. Somebody always screwing with him, slapping him around, jealous because of who his daddy was. Oh, we can't whip your daddy, so we'll beat the dog shit out of you. Well, guess when that shit ended? When Mark McCain got his own little rifle. Yeah, a little scuffle happened, a little accident happened, and Mark uh, or, or his buddy shot a friend of his. Shit happens. That's, that, that, that's just... One it's just, of the just collateral damage, right? It's just collateral, collateral damage. damage. That's one of the things that can happen. And let's say one of these little school shooting fuckers comes in here, goes into Mrs. Tinker's class. 32 of them start firing rounds at him. Maybe one of the little kids gets shot accidentally. Maybe there's a ricochet or something. Maybe. Do we, do we worry about the one that got hit or the 31 we saved? Come on, Jimmy. It's math, man. It's simple math, and you got to do this. Let, let, let's, let's go to back when you were in school. 
you remember how many times I saved your ass when people were fucking with you? And, and I was the big guy. I was the big tough guy. I was, I, I was the guy that always saved your ass in fights. You'd say the word, I'd be there for you. I always had your back. I were, you, need, were you armed? I didn't, need, I didn't need a gun. I was a big tough guy. You, on the other hand, were a little fragile thing. You were protected by your mother. You never even wore sleeveless shirts because you were embarrassed to how small your arms were. And people fucked with you a lot. I could probably buy a condo on how much milk money you had shook down from you and lunch money from punks and bullies fucking with you. Now, just imagine, Jimmy, if you had a six-shooter in your pocket like you do today, if you had a six-shooter in your pocket and you winged a couple of those little bastards, how many times do you think you'd have got shook down for milk money, for lunch money? So it you wouldn't have happened. Wait a minute, you're advocating that 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 school children should shoot each other to prevent bullying is what you're saying? I'm saying it'll end bullying is what I'm saying. Not prevent it, it'll end it. Because let, let's say I'm the bully. Now everyone knows that's far from the case. I'm one of the nicest guys you'll ever fucking meet. Oh, but let's boy. say I'm the let's say I'm the bully. And there sets little Jimmy Cornet over in the corner in his class in his class, got his little glasses on, doing his math work. And then you're a pretty smart guy. You were a bookworm. And a lot of people didn't like you because of that, because there's a lot of people don't like the little smart, fragile kid in class. And let's say I decide I'm going to go over and I'm going to slap little Jimmy right in the face just to get a laugh from everybody in the class. Will you pull out a gun and shoot me in my leg or try to fire one into my balls or put one in my shoulder? Maybe not trying to kill me, just wing me. Guess who I'm not going to fuck with anymore? Little just a non-lethal wound. No, I, absolutely. You got to teach them how to shoot, Jimmy. You got to take them out on a gun range. You don't want 32 kids in there that don't know how to work their weapons. You got to train them. Let's not be total fools about this. We got to no. train the little tykes. But let's say everyone's a sharpshooter. Everybody, <laughs> there's going to be a lot less school school shootings. I, I, am, I am picturing classrooms full of kids with thousand yard stares. You know, I, kids, I, kids I, with kids with nervous twitches and like you know can't stop blinking. Well, of course they're going to be nervous because you're wondering if the kid you're thinking of fucking with is going to shoot you or not. And it's going to put an end to it. If I think Jimmy might shoot me because I'm going to go over and slap him and get a laugh out of the class because I picked on the smart kid in class, it ain't going to happen. I'm going to bypass Jimmy and go to the punk that ain't got a gun. That's where I'm going. I'm going to fuck with that kid. So let, let's save all the nerds in America. Let, let, let's get behind the governor. Let, let's and, and and can you imagine, Jimmy, if you're sitting in a restaurant and say your food is bad, and the chef comes out and he's got a fucking attitude, and he tells you you're going to eat the steak the way you pull out a gun and put that in his head. Guess what you're going to get? You're going to get a steak the way you ordered it. Can well, you see what, where I'm coming from here? I, I, I see where you're going with this, but what, I smell what you're cooking. But what what's your age cutoff? What 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 is your age cutoff? I, well, who should I, be allowed to carry guns? Well, I mean, obviously, you don't want little six year olds. I mean, they're not mentally and physically capable of handling the guns. But I, hell, I was packing some heat at about eight nine years old. My daddy used to take me out and. And uh, I didn't like it. Wait a minute. Your, your father, who was who was the last person in, in the state of Kentucky arrested for cattle rustling, he actually gave you a gun at eight or nine years old? Well, he didn't really give it to me. He let me use his. And when we'd go out into the fields, and, and that's, where, that's where me and the notorious Johnny Boland disagreed. He wanted me to shoot defenseless little animals. He wanted me to shoot groundhogs and squirrels and deer and birds and pelicans and, and ostriches and things like that. Well, I didn't want to shoot none of them. They didn't, you know why? They didn't have a gun. It wasn't a fair fight. If you they, wanted to uh, shoot people. Hell yeah. If they're packing heat, if they got a gun, they got a slingshot on them, they got a, they got a rock. You know, that that's that's armed. They got a beer bottle. You know how many people die from beer bottles? You don't have to have a gun to be armed. All I you gotta do is be packing a big rock. Well, let's say you draw back and you're gonna throw a big rock at me. Why well, reach into my pocket, pull up my gun and shoot that arm because I'm a sharpshooter? <laughs> Guess what? I ain't gonna get hit with a rock. And I have saved a potential crime. I could have been killed by that flying rock. I could have been killed by that beer bottle. I could have been killed by that that, that pool cue. My dad hung out in some rough places, so that's why I'm using these scenarios. I was, I, you know, I was normally out in the parking lot with him. If I'd go in and try and get his drunken ass out of there, a lot of shit would go down. You know, he'd get angry, fights would break out, and if I'd have had a gun on me, I'd have been a lot safer. But I could only use his gun, and he normally had it on him. I, I just sort of imagine you late at night hunting, hunting the ultimate prey. You're like going after hobos and stuff, just just nothing, to know. Nothing makes me happier than you. You, 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 you know the most dangerous creature on the planet Earth, don't you? You know human, what human, kills humans you, and mosquitoes. Yes. You know well, no, not mosquitoes. Only if you have AIDS. 
the uh, most dangerous what thing on the what? planet Earth today. <laughs> well, that's another story. We'll talk about that on another show. The most <laughs> dangerous thing going on right now are deer. Deer care more people than any other creature on the planet Earth. It's documented. You can deer? Look it up. Yes, deer. Deer kill. They care more people than anybody because they jump out and they wreck your cars. They can kill a family of eight. Just it's like a suicide mission. You know these these bombers over and uh, these suicide bombers over in foreign countries. That's what deer are. They get back at humans for coming into the forest and hunting them down and killing them. So they pick one deer out of the herd. Hey, you go out in the middle of traffic and you fuck up that van. Well, he goes out there, gets hit by the van, and you might kill about twelve Mexicans or so, or whoever happens to be. I'm not being racist here or anything. Just whoever oh, happens to be in the van. Just whoever happens to be in the van. And that one deer will go out and kill 12 humans in one in one take. Maybe that van, caravans off to the road, hits another car. Maybe that's got a van of 12 or 15, whatever race you want to pick. White people, it don't matter to me. And now we've killed about 25. Now we've killed about 25 people because of one unarmed deer. Now here's the other thing. If the deer had guns, if the deer had guns, how many hunters would go into the forest hunting for them? Not a fucking one. That's exactly right. Gun, there, there's, gun, there's a gun. bit of a flaw in the plan, though. I mean, they don't have opposable thumbs. How would they pull the trigger? Yeah. They, and now you're trying to complicate the situation. Well, if they had, not, if they situation. would obviously, they would obviously, you two buffoons, would have a gun designed that didn't need a thumb. They, they would probably be able to use their little hooves and push a button. They would be button-operated guns, Who's not triggers. Who's going to this gun? A governor? Uh, Governor Nathan <laughs> Deets, is he going to design this gun for deer that don't have uh, opposable thumbs? Hey, well, Smokey Bear ain't doing much these days. He's a forest animal. Maybe he can help the deer. He's always wanting to prevent forest fires. Maybe he can prevent the murder of deers. Deers are good people. You can't mean to tell me that you support Georgia Governor Nathan Deal in, 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 his, in his quest to, to make every citizen in the state of Georgia an armed killer. I went to a place, Jimmy, one time here not long ago. I went to 34th and Barnett. It's a it's a street in downtown deep West End Louisville, and I was looking to purchase a home. And, the, and, and when I pulled up, of course, everybody there knew me. They all knew the star maker and wanted to know what I was doing there in my Lincoln Town car. And I said, well, I'm here to buy a home. They said, well, why do you want to do that? This is a rough area. I don't think this is for you. Well, I said, uh I'm 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 just one of the people. I'm just one of I'm one of the blue collar guys like you. I'm nothing special, and I you wanted to buy that home. Just a Pardon? man of the people, man of the people. So I go up and I sit on that porch. It's about two thirty a.m. West End Louisville. They're at thirty fourth and Burnett Avenue, and I'm sitting there. And uh, damn people! All of a sudden, there, there's old white Kenny Bowen sitting there on the porch, and a lot of the uh, of the darker persuasion people in the area come up and talk now to me. Watch and and I was a friend. Of, well, I'm just letting you know who was talking to me. There's who whites, you, there's blacks, there's Mexicans, there's Indians, there's Chinese. These it, were the black people, my people. Wait a minute. You, you just called yourself music. You called yourself white Kenny Bolin, which to me implies that there are other Kenny Bolins strolling around. Just, I can't say there's is, not. Is your like name a Crayola Bolin? box of, of there Kenny might, Bolins. There, there might be a black Kenny Bolin out there somewhere. There's a Chinese purple Kenny Bolin, Bolin a Russian Kenny Bolin. I don't know. But uh, this was the white one, and I was on the poach, and, and the po not the poach, but the porch, <laughs> excuse me. Didn't get anything going there. <laughs> it I just got the super southern up in here. I was on, I was on, it was southern. I was on the porch, and uh, and a lot of the of the of the blacks in the area come to talk to me as as one of their friends and one of their people, knowing I love their music. They heard me playing Earth, Wind, and Fire when I pulled up, oh. and, and and I and I support the people. But I want you to know that some of the black men in the area there, because they know my fascination for, for the dark women, uh, a couple of them pulled, <laughs> pulled out guns. A couple of them pulled out guns and were pointing them at me, wanting me out of their neighborhood. Thought I was there to take their women. Well, I did get in my car and leave, and I took my friends with me and, uh, and got my ass out of town. Unfortunately, I didn't get shot. But had I had my gun with me that night, and pulled that out and shot a couple of those assholes that didn't want me uh, doing uh, sexual things with their women, it would have been a whole different story. I would have had a lot of sex that night. I'd have had a new home. My car wouldn't have been fucked with, and I'd have been a lot happier guy. All if I'd have just had six rounds in my gun. That's you're, all I would have needed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just stop. You're telling me because your lifelong fascination has been with porn star Vanessa Del Rio that you that you somehow, if you'd have had a gun, you would have got laid person, that night. First, 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 per, first person I ever wrote on web TV, by the way. First internet contact I ever had, Vanessa Del Rio. So, yeah, I'd say there's a bit of a fascination there. 
Alice, help me. So, what, so what's your question? What are you trying to ask me? Don't even know it. I didn't, I didn't go down there to get laid, Jimmy. I went down there to get the house. The getting laid was a bonus when the black women came out and saw the king sitting there, knowing that I'm a, uh, I'm one of their men. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just like them, just a different shade. That's all. And that is the legend of White Kenny Bolin. As a matter you know. of fact, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people have, have, have pointed out. They said Kenny. Uh, I saw it written down somewhere. Kenny Bolin was a poor black man raised in Lagrange. A poor, born a, poor well, a, poor, a poor black child. A poor born a poor black child. Been, where has that been written down? I Him and Maven was, Johnson. Think, he I saw it. it he saw it in the movie. Man. He he you saw it in the jerk. Well, no, I did not. I don't even know that movie. It was uh, it was in the old era. Uh, <laughs> no, it was a movie then. The old era was, was the goddamn newspaper that for, fourteen. There you go. There you go. One of the documents. Uh, one of the, the old era. Fourteen. Uh, the, the old uh, Lagrange has a community of three thousand six hundred and forty-one people. You trying to say only fourteen of them are reading the town paper? I've been now. You're now you shitting on Lagrange. Wait, of course I'm shitting on Lagrange. Lagrange, Kentucky. I've been to Lagrange, Kentucky. The town hooker's a virgin. They have one hotel. It's so small they stole my towels the one night that I stayed there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, what? It's, it's your let home. Me, let, let, let me let me explain something to you. In a quote that I, with you. Let me explain something to you that I heard something in a quote here recently. Lagrange is swanky. Middletown is pig shit. So you take that to your. Did you hear that? I heard it on Justified. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's Timothy, a complete Timothy, Timothy Oliphant said that. Well, no, Timothy Oliphant didn't say it. It was uh, it was uh, it was uh, one of his nemesis on the show, and Timothy make was good. Tim- make Timothy. Make Timothy, good. Make good. Timothy was arresting this drug dealing piece of shit on the show, and he says, "Hey, he says, I'm sorry, I didn't arrest you in your swanky hotel." And the guy bowed up on him. He says. Paris is swanky. Lexington is pig shit. Now, even you got to agree with me that Lexington is pig shit. So I just changed the cities around a little bit to fit me and you. Lagrange is swanky. Middletown is pig shit. I don't even know what you're talking about. You have completely gone off. Anybody, the- anybody who watches Justified knows exactly what I'm talking about. I don't care because, oh my God! I- and, and and to more reinforce my gun carrying uh, uh, supportion here. Timothy Oliphant, he play he plays the Raylan Gibbons. Wait a minute, is, play- that a word? is that a word? I'm pretty word? damn sure it is. I just said it. The uh, Timothy Oliphant, he plays Raylan Gibbons. What is Raylan Gibbons? He's a United States Marshal. What is he? He's a sharpshooter. What does people not do? They don't fuck with Raylan Gibbons because he will shoot your fucking ass if you fuck with him. So they know he's the man. Nobody fucks with him. Why? Because he's got a gun. Where does he take his gun? Everywhere he fucking goes. Bars, uh, uh, bathhouses, wherever he goes, he's got a gun. Bathhouses? That's, that, well, that's on television. That's fictitious. That's not real life. We're talking about real life. It's based, in Harlan, it's based in Harlan, Kentucky, and it's as true to the goddamn truth as you'll ever want to see. It's based on true real-life stories. The names have been changed to protect the guilty. That's the only thing. So we it's Dragnet. Talking- we're, we're well, there, there you go. Now Alice is even backing me up. No, <laughs> Friday and Gannon, Friday and Gannon, everywhere they went, what did they have? They let some of these little fuckers get mouthy and start popping off. What would happen? They'd pull out a gun, pop a cap in her ass. That would put an that, end to the conversation. They that, had guns, and it put an end to bullshit. That was television. That's fictitious. We're talking about real life. A don't George you dare. Of- don't you dare say fictitious about, about Dragnet. You can say it about... The rifleman, you can say it about Bonanza. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, it, it said these stories are true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent in that case. True stories. And they had guns. And it fucked the criminals up. Because if the criminals had, had guns, so did the cops. And that evened it up. Well, are the cops any fucking better than us? I don't need a cop. To, if I call 911, it'd be an iron and a half for goddamn cop gifts here. If I got a gun in my pocket, iron and a iron half. But if I got a gun in my pocket, I don't need a cop. I can handle fucking shit myself. And that's, well, that's exactly what problem. I tend to do. That's the problem. People think they don't need the police because they can handle shit themselves if they've got well, a gun in their pocket. And that's that's fictitious. That's oh, I need the police. I need the police to come here with a goddamn body bag and one of them autopsy guys to, to analyze where and how many times I shot the fucker that tried to fuck with me. That's the only thing we need the police for is paperwork. And that way they got to do a lot less of the killing. If we handled a lot of our own defense and a lot of our own killing, because the police are coming in and what happens? They shoot 
They shoot old Billy. Billy was a heroin addict. Billy lunged at the cop. He had something in his hand. It looked like a gun. Cop shot him. Well, let us start weeding these fuckers out and, and take the heat off the cops. Why don't we do that? Let's help the police department. So here's can I make it? Can I make it any clearer for you, Jimmy? No, How are you not seeing this? Not. You're saying that you're in favor of 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 Georgia Governor Nathan Deal's ruling and and the, the the guns everywhere law that you think that and and people children as young as eight nine years old should have guns in schools so that they can defend themselves against possible perpetrators is what you're thank saying. You, thank you very much. That's everything I've been saying. And and let's even go to Bonanza. You're talking about all this fiction. Bonanza. You and I were both big fans of Bonanza. Who didn't get fucked with as a rule on Bonanza? Well. Not, not not Adam. Adam will fucking shoot you. Not Hoss. Hoss will beat the shit out of you and then shoot you. Little Joe was a little fucking redneck anyway. He was just looking to fuck with somebody, and he'd shoot you in a heartbeat. Now, poor old Ben, he was the rational thinker of the bunch. And, not, and, and people every now and then would fuck with Ben, and then the three his three older sons would have to come in and save his ass. And then who really got fucked with on that show? Go Hop ahead. Sing. Hop sing! Thank you. I knew you would agree with me. I knew you would know because Hop Singh never had a goddamn gun, and they fucked with him all the time. They slapped him around like a little bitch. They'd make him cook him biscuits and gravy, and then, then they would cut his fucking hair off and leave him bruised and punked out. Now, if he'd had a gun like the rest of the cart, right, that shit wouldn't have went down if you know it. I... I... You know I'm right. You know I'm right. Alice, help me. It's got to make sense. I, it doesn't it plain as the nose on your face. It would. It's rare that I would suggest that we talk. This. I'm getting hot. I want people to boys, defend boys, boys, boys. Shut up. It's it's now, rare. Talk. It would it would be rare that I would suggest that we talk about a little bit of independent wrestling in order to to bring us all back together again. But I think that's well, now that we're all in agreement on the gun rule. I think we can move on to another topic. <laughs> I think I've pled my yeah. case well today. Hey hey, before we move to another topic, let the people decide. These are your fans that listen to the Jim Cornette experience. These are your fans, not mine. Mine are over at Facebook. You got all them goddamn Twitter followers. Uh, and 90%, as a matter of fact, like me even better than you. And these are your fans. Let them vote. Let them decide who's right, Jimmy Cornette or Kenny Starmaker Bowling. And I don't know where Alice stands. I don't think Alice being neutral is what, normal. What is, wait a minute. What is your Twitter, by the way? What, what? At, at, at Starmaker Bowling. Is that an assumed name? That's my real – I told you a few episodes ago that everything's been legally changed. I don't have to use four names anymore. Uh, it is It is now – my birth certificate, my driver's license, and my Social Security card in my, in my wallet, all three say Kenny Bolin for the first time ever in my life. Well, well I'm glad that's about that. That, that Star Maker Bolin is your Twitter. So, folks, please, Absolutely. Twitter. Please, please, I'm begging please you to Twitter. vote. Please Twitter both of us and tell us what you think about this goddamn you know bunch what? of bullshit that we and have been. And I tell you what I'll do. I will <laughs> bet you. I will bet you two free two fish dinners at Clarksville Seafood Shop that more people agree with me than agree with you. Now you're, let, I, you're you're giving away Steve Near's fish over at Clarksville Seafood, the best fish on the planet. You're giving away give Steve away Nears. give away. I'll barter with him. You know what I'm going to give him? a gun so he can fucking defend himself on people like you oh, that come in there and try and raise hell over uh, over a bad piece of fish. Which, by you the way, I've never, ever gotten a part of question. Have you, have you ever, I, I, I know this, answer this question before I ask well, it, have you ever faked a, it. Have you ever faked a heart attack to get out of paying bills like this fucking guy? And, and, and Alice was telling me about this in, in, in Canada, the promoter for the hardcore road trip, another one of these ECW ripoffs. Steve O'Neill went under, thank God. Maybe we can get some relief from this ECW bullshit. But the guy in Canada, what was his name, Alice? Tell me about this. Well, it, it depends on what day you catch him on. Sometimes it's Mark Livingston, sometimes it's Mark Anderson, and he might very well have other assumed names. What did he, what did he do under the one name of, of ten years or so ago? I, I'm trying to something with Bill Cosby. Oh, this is this is one of my favorite stories. Um, he was running a promotion and advertised that during the 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 intermission of of this particular wrestling show that Bill Cosby would be doing stand up. <laughs> wow! And charged charged a hundred bucks a seat, it's and then of dude. course there was um, there was no show. So, whoa, 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 what you're telling me is Bill Cosby no showed the event. Is that what you're saying? 
He fucking that's, that's nuts certainly, off people. That's, that's certainly a way to that, that, that. There you go. That's, 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 like a way, that's a way to phrase it. That's a way to phrase I, it. Act like Bill Cosby. Fucking no-show a bunch of fans that paid 100 bucks a ticket. That, that put, put him in a tight spot. He, uh, you ever fake a heart attack, Star Maker, to get out of paying a bill like this guy did last week with, the, with you know, <laughs> screwing the boys and leaving them to stranded get out, in a foreign country? To get, out, to get out of paying a bill? No. To get out of being arrested? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever stolen a wrestling ring that's have that's I, what i would like to know have either of you ever stolen i mean i don't know how you would pack it up in a briefcase either and of take us, it what away. are you are you grouping me with this fucking <laughs> reprehensible fucking reprobate i i'm just i mean i am engaging in engaging in a little hyperbole to to make a ridiculous point uh my, my friend big daddy was telling me not that one the other one um not yeah, Shirley Crabtree, but I'm the sure. other guy. Exactly. But this this gentleman ahead. once stole a wrestling ring. I'm not sure how you do that. I, but I he... don't know how the fuck you go about stealing a wrestling ring. I I, I know some people that can do some things. Uh, that has never been on my list of things uh, to do or, or to ask to be obtained is to steal a wrestling ring. That's it. Jimmy, um, you've done some horrible things in your life. Have you ever stolen a wrestling ring? No, I've ne- I've never stolen anything, much less a wrestling you're, ring. And I've I, 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 the you're reason, dying that you've never stolen one. The only reason that you haven't done it is because you couldn't figure out a way to make a profit on it. St- steal a wrestling ring, you you fucking well, shite, any, any, you con man. Anything I do, I do look to make a profit on, and I don't know how that makes me a con man and a shyster as all these names that you call me. But uh, back to this, uh, now I didn't know him under the names that you that you all know him as. I, I'm friends with him on Facebook under a couple of three different names. I can't recall them all right now. He's a very dear friend of mine, and and I feel bad for the guy. You all sitting here bad mouthing him and talking about stealing rings allegedly. I don't think that's even been documented or confirmed. And and the poor man is right now laying in a hospital somewhere up in Canada, clinging for life as we speak and you guys are bad mouthing the guy over a misfortunate thing that happened uh it was it was a it was a double show it was a it was a split show right they had a a, a day show and a night show yes, and unfortunately, in the business in the business we call it a matinee and an evening show but are you saying that you support this guy that left wrestler stranded in a foreign country that that didn't pay anybody that faked a heart attack and went to the hospital to to, right. to get out of paying are you saying you support him he's a friend of yours well yes he is a dear friend of mine and and like i said you're saying fake the heart attack he's in a hospital right i know this for a fact i spoke to him in his room just a couple of days ago he's clinging to life he told me so he didn't he doesn't think he's going to walk out of that hospital alive is what he told me and uh, the other thing is, is that you're saying the boys didn't get paid. How the fuck can he pay them when he's laying in a goddamn hospital bed clinging for life? The first show that they did, uh, and, and, and it was under agreement that everybody was going to be paid at the end of the show. And that's where I got to come back on some of these wrestlers that were there. The wrestlers, show, and even me, Jimmy, um, even whatever, you, whatever level of fame you want to attach to me. And I've even talked with you about it in the past when we've talked about bookings and, and promoters that are booking them and we get each other's opinion on whether we should go or not. You always get at least half your money up front. And if you got the clout that I got, you can demand the full amount plus an extra 20%. And then you give the 20% back to them when you show up that way. It wait, a, wait a minute. You give 20% back to them when you show up. What I, have, have, a, I have, have a, I have a, I have, have so you I have, I have them overpay me by 20%, and that way, if everything doesn't meet my stipulations and standards, I keep that 20% to make up for anything they tried to fuck me over on. You know me. I've, I, I like the yoo I like to have all my yoo lined up. Uh, ice Yoo-hoo. cold, by the way. And I, I, I like my peanut M&Ms. I, I got certain things that I want in an event when I'm going to be there. Uh, my Snicker bars. I love my Snickers. I like my yoo and I like my peanut M&Ms. And I normally demand uh, at least one or two Big Macs to be brought to me that day. The double kind, though, not the single. And if these and if these little simple little little requests are not met, then I keep that extra 20%. And if they do, I refund the 20% back to them. But I cover my ass. So any of these wrestlers that went to this event, a double event, by the way, a, a night, a, a day show and a night show. Poor man has a heart attack, goes to the hospital, can't physically pay anybody, and then these bitches are crying and crying and moaning because they didn't get paid. Well, if you were stupid enough to show up at an event in a foreign country and not get prepaid for the event and at least get half your money up front, then then, then you're a stupid fuck and you need to be shutting the fuck up anyway. Now that's my opinion on the whole matter. And let, let's not be burying this poor guy in a hospital. Could he probably ain't Alan- gonna live. 
Talk Tell us if he probably ain't going to walk out of the hospital. Are, 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 are we out of time yet? We're close, sir. We're very, very close. I, I'm, I'm, I'm no, 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 what, do you, what do you mean? I, I got about another hour's worth of shit I want to talk about. I've been on your show another four weeks, and I, I'm hot about another thing. How about, how about this fucking James Storm? What about this shit he pulled on me? What about that <laughs> crap? He's a personal friend of yours from what I've heard. And you have I haven't seen much defense out of you on this. That 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 son of a bitch dropped my name on TNA television. I had originally heard that he had gone and I thought he had requested my services to be his manager, maybe some financial advice, maybe sexual advice, maybe to try and patch things up with him and his wife. I don't know. I thought he was calling upon me in one of my lines of expertise. But I hear that he called himself the Star Maker. He you're talking, you're talking about my goddamn, goddamn name. Could you put a sock in it for a sec? You're talking about Cowboy James Storm of TNA oh. Wrestling, and he called himself the Star Maker uh, oh, on, on what TNA a bastard. Last week, what and a you bastard! Take offense to this. And God there, damn right I am. There was a big Twitter war about it between you guys, and yeah. You know, I, I don't think that he was thinking about you when he said that. But uh, how can you not be thinking about me? That's like calling yourself um, Hammer and Hank. What, who do you think of when you say Hammer and Hank? What's well, fucking Hank Aaron? Who do you think of when you say the Louisville Slugger? Well, that's, of course, you. He didn't call himself the Louisville Slugger. He called himself the Star Maker. And everybody on his goddamn planet Earth knows that I'm the only man, adult, known as the star maker on the goddamn planet earth can you name me one other one other than me and i am uh, have been in the wrestling business i'm retired now but you can't tell me that james storm wasn't thinking of me when he said that trying to get a rub from me and then he says it's the only time he's ever trended on twitter ever well go fucking figure that he, he did not goddamn, say that he did say it it's documented it's on it's on his own goddamn twitter page i saw it he said it's the only time he's ever trended in his life, and it's the night he dropped my name. Well, go fucking figure, because I'm the most popular goddamn man on the planet right now. My video's been a huge success. Fifteen minutes, people, Jimmy, are sitting back and are watching my video that my lovely son, the prince, Prince Bolin, shot. Your lovely okay. son? No, wait, wait a minute. You you what? are taking advantage of a mentally deficient human being at McDonald's. That's not, that's and, and, not and documented. It, that's not documented. We don't know that for sure. We don't know it for sure, but we can we can guess that. And it was all over, it was it. all over the internet. It went viral that you. Uh -huh. Bolin trolling a guy at McDonald's and it, it had thousands of views and you should be ashamed of yourself for taking advantage of this guy that was obviously obviously mentally deficient. Not only that, but he was out of work and he, he had a mental he had problems. a lot of bad luck. He had a lot of bad luck going on. And you took advantage of him. And he, and he had advantage of God, you are so skewed in your views. He approached me at a McDonald's. <laughs> me and my son uh, decided to go up there and have us uh, some chicken nuggets and, and a flurry. And, um, this man, you, and this man approached me. What, Jimmy? What what smart remark are you trying to get in now? I'm just saying that you went to McDonald's for chicken McNuggets and a flurry. And That's flurry, exactly. Don't have flurries at McDonald's. Where They're, do they have flurries at? Queen. Oh. What, what, why am why, I well, stop trying to this guy on his own level now what what the hell is going on here are we out of time yet no we're not out of time because so you're the <laughs> you're, you're the expert on frozen food oh, shit. you're out of your day so he approaches me and asks me hey are you kenny starmaker bowling the guy with ohio river valley wrestling and i didn't want to make the man look like a fool or insult his intelligence and i said yes I didn't want to correct him on the name of the company no, I, I knew that i knew where i used to work somebody looked like a fool so he asked me a lot of questions, and I answered them the best way that I knew how. I, I wanted to give him the answers that he was looking for. And, look, and did you see how excited he was when he found out that Vince McMahon Sr. smothered his wife in her sleep and took the company from her? Did you see how excited he was to find that information out? Yeah, I, fa I fabricated it a little bit. I changed the names. But look Just, how happy I made the guy. He got up. inside information from Kenny Starmaker Bowling. Shut up. Nobody has ever been able to prove that Vince McMahon Sr. smothered his wife in his sleep to steal control of the WWE. Nobody has ever been able to prove that, and, and you have no business saying and that. I, and I said that on the video. I, he says, do people know this? I said, yeah, people know, but a lot of people don't really like to talk All about right, it. We're, we're bad bad I don't, things we're, happen to people who talk about that. Along this you show. know it, Jimmy. You worked up 
affair. And you know that anytime you mention Vince's dad smothering his mother in her, in her I'm sorry, his wife in her sleep to take control of the company, you, normally the next day you don't have a job. You know you that. You're a little bit that, I never heard anything about that. You're completely making I heard, you, I heard you were the one that started the rumor in the back about it. Does it no. that <laughs> get out of your ass. I, I, heard, I heard you the one to come up with it. There's hold on, on, hold on. You two, you guys, on, are, you guys are both I'm basketball based, fans, I'm right? Based, I'm basing it on shit you said, Jimmy. Go Alice ahead. Is king and you what? won't even let her. Alice, yes, get yes, out of Alice, here. Folks, you, you guys are both basketball fans, right? Let's, let's, yes. let's hit some really super fresh breaking news before we, we, we take a, a step out. Oh, Donald Sterling <laughs> has been hit with a lifetime ban, a $2.5 million fine. He admitted that it was his voice on the recordings and that he, he did that. Uh, the Clippers coach says that if Donald Sterling is there as the owner next season, he will not be back. And it looks like um, this guy, Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, says that he has the votes to to force Donald Sterling to sell. That is the, the well, breaking good. news. Well, good. Then Donald Sterling, the president of the Hair Club for Men, is fucked, and so are we for this program. I apologize to every listener here for having Star Maker Bowling on the program. We will never do this again until the next time. And for this episode of the Jim Corbett no, Experience. No, 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 no. So don't long, no, everybody. No, no, we're out of here. No, no, don't wrap it up yet. I want to talk. Up. I, I, I hear Alice is sick. She might not be able to be back on the next show. Hey, am I still in line to be the co-host? Alex. No!